57. The rounder the panel, the stronger it is. This modern bonnet is almost completely flat and it's extremely weak. It needs this elaborate piece behind to make it stiff enough. This old Morris Minor bonnet needs hardly any stiffening at all. It is made of slightly thicker metal, but the main reason for its strength is its shape. Deeply rounded curves like this are the obvious way to give pressed steel strength, and I'm sure this is why such rounded bulbous cars came into fashion in the 30s and 40s. In the truly modern home or the truly modern car, it's functional design that counts. Smart styling is styling with a purpose, as seen in this new 1948 Futuramic Oldsmobile. Futuramic is a brand new word created to describe this brand new post-war General Motors car. Luxuriously appointed inside and out, the Futuramic Oldsmobile brings truly modern post-war design to the automotive field. The rigidity of the steel pressings can be greatly increased by welding them together to make uh, hollow box sections. A bit like that. Uh, this welding is done by machines like this called spot welders. Although it uh, looks rather complicated, all it's doing is uh, squash the two bits of metal between its jaws and pass a large electric current through it. This heats the metal up enough to weld it together. So, um... This now feels completely rigid. If you look at any modern car, you can actually see the little spots. They're all welded together like this. Although at first the welding was done by portable machines like this, today it's usually done by robots. Cars were traditionally built around a strong chassis like this. All the components were fixed on, and then a fairly flimsy body could be dropped over the top. However, Edward Budd's techniques changed all this. Bud realised that uh, his all steel bodies. Whoops! <laughs> Bud realised his all steel bodies could be made so strong that you really, really didn't need a chassis at all. All the mechanical component, components could be bolted straight on. Yes. I thought the engine, axles, and wheels were always fixed onto the chassis. On ordinary cars, yes. But this Morris is the latest product of engineering science, and the wheels are fixed directly onto the body. The enormous advantage of making a whole pressed steel shell without a separate chassis is that it's highly suited to mass production. Once you have the dies and the presses, the whole process is very quick and cheap. Led by America, the car industry lost its dependence on earlier industrial techniques and became a dominant industry in its own right. Presses like these have been used to mass-produce cars ever since. Although today cars look very different and have improved in countless small ways, they're basically very similar. Almost the only radical change on a par with pressed steel construction has been the introduction of front-wheel drive. In many ways, the 1934 Citroen Traction Avant was really the first modern car. It was front-wheel drive, it was the very first mass-produced car without a chassis, and it even had independent suspension. 
Andre Citroen was friends with Bud and was much more adventurous than any of the American car manufacturers who'd rejected Bud's ideas. Front-wheel drive was slow to catch on. The first popular car to use it in Britain was the Mini, not introduced until 25 years later. Some baby loaded. Remember that family at the bus stop? You know, the ones who just couldn't get away? The new Austin 7s transformed their lives. But what about all that luggage? Can they get it in? With all the mechanical parts at the front, there was much more room inside, which was a big selling point. The Mini has its driving wheels at the front. This makes it all very compact, particularly with the engine mounted sideways. The big advantage to the manufacturer was that all the mechanics could be assembled together and fitted under the body shell in one lump. In the last few years, front wheel drive has suddenly become very popular. It's now actually more common than rear wheel drive. Today, body shells are designed very scientifically with computers, which has made them lighter and more aerodynamic. It's also made them look more and more alike. This shell could have come from almost any car. Even professional mechanics who've seen it couldn't tell what make and model it was at first sight. Despite all this design, the steel body shell still has considerable limitations. Superficially, the panels bent ridiculously easily and sorting out even a small dent is quite an elaborate process. Some outer panels are now made of plastic, which doesn't dent so easily, but this isn't suitable for the car's structure. Another problem with the steel body shell is that even a small dent can distort a large part of it and put vital parts, like the suspension mountings, out of alignment. Straightening it out is quite an elaborate process. First, the body shell has to be firmly fixed to the particular jig for the model of car, precisely locating all the important points. The damage can then be pulled out. Badly damaged bits still have to be replaced, but it pulls most of the shell back into alignment. For more serious impacts, Bud was originally very proud of the safety of his steel bodies and arranged all sorts of stunts to prove it. Citroen did the same. 